The whole thing is very exciting. <laughs> it's a passion. Oh my God, is that ever soft? We all know that the fur trade was part of our history. Not many of us realize, however, that the fur trade is still very important to the culture and livelihood of many people across Canada and around the world. Let's go on a little journey and you'll see what I mean. Our story starts here in Montreal where the North American fur trade began. This building was a place where furs from across the continent were collected before being shipped to Europe. It's now a museum devoted to fur trade history. When Europeans first began settling in North America, the world was in the grip of a mini ice age. Winters in Europe were long and cold, so furs were in great demand to produce warm and practical clothing. The fur trade became the economic engine that drove adventurers to explore a great new continent. From this site on the St. Lawrence River, teams of fur traders known as voyagers set out each spring covering thousands of kilometers on an often perilous journey that would take them to the Great Lakes and beyond. They traveled deep into the interior of the north to trade for furs with native hunters. The metal tools, woven textiles and other goods brought by the Europeans were very valuable for people living on the land. These new products supported the traditional Aboriginal way of life. And unlike the homesteaders that would follow, fur traders did not seek to take over Indian lands. The fur trade is still important today. It continues to support the livelihood and culture of many people who live close to the land. Frederick Rickard is a Cree trapper from Moose Factory in Northern Ontario. The modern fur trade is an excellent example of how we can make responsible use of what nature provides while protecting wilderness areas. Each plant and animal species generally produces more offspring than the land can support to maturity. Like other species, we live by making use of part of that surplus. <laughs> The goal is to live on the interest nature produces each year without eating into our environmental capital. Conservationists define this as sustainable use. Aboriginal people call it the circle of life. Trapping beaver, muskrat and other animals provides trappers like Frederick Rickard with food. Selling fur provides money for the equipment and supplies he needs to maintain his land-based life. Meat not used for food is returned to the forest to help other animals survive the long winter. Nothing is wasted. A trapper will spend over six hours trapping, skinning and preparing a skin for market. Proper preparation is crucial to preserve the quality of the fur.
Not all trappers are native or live in the north. Claire Dawson and her sister Lucy traps so that uh, human scent is removed from the traps. Then we will check uh, the, the land all over to see what's moving, uh, what kind of uh, animal is active and present on our territory. So uh, we'll make the inventory for the beaver. We'll see if there's some signs of foxes and uh, if we can see marten, mink. And uh, so that's how we prepare. Trapping is strictly regulated in Canada by the provincial and territorial wildlife departments. No endangered species may be used. Beaver and muskrat alone make up more than one half of the wild furs used in the Canadian fur trade, and these species are as abundant as when Europeans first arrived in Canada. Well, it's not anybody that can trap. You, you cannot just go out down to the corner store and buy a trapping license and you, here you go in the field. First here, you have to follow a mandatory course uh, of 35 hours. This is four days, normally two weekends. So you have first to follow that course and not only follow, but also to succeed to that course. It means then after you get your certificate. The Fur Institute of Canada's Trap Research and Development Program provided the scientific basis for a new agreement on international humane trapping standards, which has now been adopted by all the major fur producing nations and the European Union. This important program, funded by the Canadian government and the International Fur Trade Federation, ensures that animal welfare priorities are addressed in a practical way while ensuring that animals captured for food, fur, or nuisance management programs are treated with respect. Trapping is practiced in every country around the world and most trapping has little or nothing to do with the fur trade. Wildlife populations often must be managed to prevent excessive damage to habitat, livestock, and crops, to protect endangered prey species, to control the spread of disease, and for many other purposes. We've got 80,000 trappers all across Canada, out there over that big country on which 80% is inaccessible. Those people are bringing us all the clues and all the necessary information that we need to do basic management. They are the eyes and the ears for biologists that are sitting in the office. Without these people, it's impossible to do a good management. Not all furs come from the wild. The first efforts to raise mink and fox began in North America over 100 years ago. Today, about half the furs produced in Canada come from family farms like this one in southern Ontario. My father, he's been raising minks since he was a teenager and I've always, as a kid, I've always found them interesting. I went to university and, and worked away from home for a while and and I've always been drawn back to the mink ranch. Everything we do on the ranch is, is just aimed at keeping the mink satisfied and, uh, and as happy as they possibly can be, just so that we can produce the, uh, the best quality that we can. The animals that have been raised for decades, generation after generation, as, as domestic mink, and, and they were born, they were never born into the wild, so they're, they're born into these conditions and they, they don't know any, any different and uh, it isn't any really, really any different than any other livestock. They're, they're uh, born and raised for a purpose. We're, you know, producing a natural resource, renewable resource that isn't damaging the environment. There are very few resources that we have to use that aren't a, a recycled product. Feed for farm 